Greetings, metaphysicians. This is episode 125, Be Flexible. Many, many downloads coming in about the true meaning and depth of this word and what it means for us individually and for the world moving forward over the next few months and years. We also have an excellent bonus content clearing for this episode, so stay tuned and enjoy. You are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical. This podcast explores the spiritual and metaphysical world through the experiences and opinions of the host and those interviewed. It should not necessarily be seen as direct endorsement or personal advice to our listeners. We encourage you to use your own discernment, judgment, and intuition regarding anything you learn from this show. Let's get meta. Welcome to the Let's Get Metaphysical podcast. I'm your host, Renata Maniachi. Here to remind you that you are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience here on lovely planet Earth. Make the most of it. This is season seven, Heaven on Earth, and this is episode 125. And today we are going to talk about flexibility. This word has kept dropping in ever since the new year in several different ways. And I would like to go in and see if we get any deeper meanings on this. So let's jump right into it. Are you ready? Let's get meta. Masters and angels, I request your presence, guidance, and support through this episode. Please help these words to be useful to all listeners on their evolutionary journey. Let me know the truth, speak the truth, become the truth, and be the truth. And please let this episode reach whoever needs to hear it. Thank you with gratitude and full faith. Bless creation. As I said, the word flexible has dropped in in a few different ways since the beginning of this year. I believe it first came up right at the New Year's Day. I always do a little card pull for myself to see what I need to know moving forward into the year. One of the cards that I picked was flexible. And I didn't think much of it. I just thought, oh, okay, good. Always good reminder, flexible, flexibility, excellent. And there was since then a few more times that I've pulled that card during the few times that I do pull cards for my online events. And it's come up twice since then in my online events, flexible. And then there was another time where one of my guides came to me and gave me a transmission that was basically saying, you need to stay flexible this year. And I got the sense that it's not just for me personally because of the tone of that message and also of pulling the cards for the online community that was for everybody. And I don't know how that's going to come across, but it seemed pretty apparent, pretty upfront, pretty in your face. And so I've been sinking into that. And every time something just in my own daily life shifts or changes, I try to just accept it easily and with grace as kind of this tenet of flexibility and knowing that, okay, you've been warned that things are going to change, even if they're little things. And I'm one of those people, I don't know about you, but one of the <laughs> tenets of my personality that has slowly been changing over time with all the subconscious work and all the other work within my community is that when something, when I had my heart set on something or when there was a plan and something changed about it, it wasn't easy for me to accept whatever it was, like if the plan was to go somewhere on the weekend and then something changed, I would be upset about the change. Or if we were going to supposed to leave at a certain time and we were late, 
that change would make me irritated, frustrated, upset. So, <laughs> I, you know, there's a, what's a big, I'll say was, was a big aspect of my personality that wasn't very easygoing and maybe not opening my arms wide to change that was unexpected, unexpected change, and definitely not exhibiting the characteristic of flexibility. And I have seen this change in myself, especially over the last five, six years, because I think what it mostly is, is those subconscious structures that have reinforced that tenant of my personality have been taken out over time after listening to subconscious repair every week for six, seven years now, and other kind of reformations that happen with the events that I attend with John Douglas these types of things that are holding you back get taken out and you can see the most amazing thing is that you can see the change in yourself over time. And that is one of the things that I've noticed is that I used to be upset and irritated if something changed and now I'm mostly not. But I think that part of that is because you don't just take things out with these processes, you, you they get replaced. And so my experience has been that that particular aspect of my personality has been replaced with faith, kind of open-ended faith that, oh, okay, that changed. So that must be what is called for in this moment, right? This time has shifted to a different time. So there must be some reason why that is the correct time. So it's more about opening, I have opened more into faith and trust that things are the way that they are supposed to be. Which when you look at the world is not an easy task to do right now. And it doesn't mean that I don't still feel things and feel judgment and anger and frustration at the way that many things are in the world right now. I do feel those things. And above all of that, on a bird's eye view or a big picture level, or I do this thing called zooming out. Maybe you've done it where it's, you kind of see, you kind of float outside yourself and you can see yourself wherever you are. Then you zoom out and you can see the building you're in, and then you can see the town and then you can see the state and then you can see the country. And then soon you're like looking at the earth from this universe, something like that. And for me, it's a really great exercise to remember that there's more than just whatever happens to be around me in this material, earthly, th third dimensional moment, right? Not only is there more happening on the planet than whatever is in my face at this time, there's more happening on the unseen levels around me and in the unseen dimensions around me. And so all of these things have helped me over time to be more surrendered to the present moment, however that might appear. But I'm really curious. I'm really curious why this flexibility thing keeps coming in because I have plans. I have plans this year, plans to go places, plans to meet up with people, plans to go to different events all kinds of things, just like you have plans, right? And the test will be when those change, if those change, can I accept it? Can I be flexible enough to just accept that that, for whatever reason, is how God, source, the universe creator, my high self, my soul, my guides, my angelic teams, however you want to see what else is at play, right? However you want to, however you, it's not even how you want to, it's how you envision the rest of your entourage wants it in that moment, right? You think you want to go do this thing at this time, 
but something happens and that is not what in fact is going to occur. Can we be okay with that and just move on? Now, some people are so good at this. I used to, even as this was something that was so hard for me to do is just like to, you know, accept that something had changed. There were several people in my life, friends and other people around me who are so what I would call easygoing and flexible. And it was like nothing phased them. Like, oh, okay, we're not doing this. Okay, great. What's the next thing? That is a personality characteristic that I really enjoyed being around. Probably because I wanted to emulate that somehow and I couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> like when, once I get my head stuck on something or set on something, it was really hard to let go. Have you ever had that feeling like you, you have a craving for something? It comes up like this too. Like I'll have a craving for a specific thing and then like the restaurant's closed or something. And I have to somehow figure out a way to have that thing or as close to that thing as possible because I've got it in my head that that's what I want. And again, that happens less now, but I'm sure that maybe that example is something that many people listening can relate to. And so I guess what we're talking about here is the unknown flexibility that we all need or maybe have already come up against so far in this year and how do we react to that and I'm just getting some downloads here I don't know if downloads the right word but getting some information coming in about how flexibility is happiness flexibility is faith flexibility is grace. It allows you to gracefully be in the world. Flexibility is humility because if something changes and you're flexible about it, you're not fighting it, then you are not thinking that you know better than nature. Flexibility is on some levels, surrender to nature, surrender to what is called for in that present moment, anything that's called for in that present moment. Flexibility is presence. It's, it's actually being the most present. If you can be flexible, you are being present because you're reflecting what that moment needs that moment needed a shift. It needed a change. It needed a transformation. It needed to stop. It needed to go. It needed to be brought forward. It needed to be brought back. It needed to be completely eliminated. It needed to be deleted. It needed to be completely and utterly reworked so that it's unrecognizable. And that's kind of how we are going through this incarnation, going through this lifetime, going through this journey on this planet at this time, there are certain things that shift and change and are asked of us that maybe we don't expect or weren't ready for or are ready for or all of these things that the act of being flexible can help to move us to where we need to be. And a lot of times I've noticed in those moments where I don't react negatively to having to be flexible, <laughs> the outcome turns out better than I thought it would have been had it not changed. I'm sure many of you have experienced that. The thing that shifted and it ended up being a more fun time. You ran into somebody that you weren't going to before. You learned something that you wouldn't have otherwise. You saw something new that wasn't on the plan, or you got to spend much needed downtime with yourself or with your family or with a friend or whatever. And those moments are validations that 
we can accept when we accept what the present moment and what nature is bringing us when we can accept that things can be the best in that moment they can be the best for whatever reason even if we don't understand the reason even if we don't see all the invisible calculations and shifts that went into that moment that change we get to have that grace have that humility have that happiness have that presence have that faith have that surrender that flexibility can bring and does bring and it's interesting i have a fairly vivid memory of being younger and being able to touch my toes you know to be flexible like physically flexible in this human body and all of a sudden it seemed like i reached a certain age maybe i reached the age of like 11 and i couldn't touch my toes anymore i became a fairly rigid person in a physical body physically rigid and that for me i think translated also to my personality that rigidity of like I said before, just if something changed, being like really, <laughs> really stressed out by something that changed like that, right? And actually, this is so interesting. I, this might be a correlation. But w the moments in my life where I was really into yoga, for example, and doing yoga all, every day and got m to be more flexible, I think that translated into adding, uh, injecting some more flexibility into my personality. But I do think it's the spiritual work that really sped up the process in a way that it could have taken me, you know, 20 years instead of five years to drop some of these resistances to being flexible and being more easygoing. But why? Why now? There are, this is what's coming in, there are so many things happening on majority levels that we don't see or hear. It's like if there is a 100% change happening in the world, we're really only aware of maybe 10% of it. The stuff that we're seeing, the stuff that we're hearing, you know, however we're doing that is 10% and there's 90% of things that are changing on all levels, seen and unseen, known and unknown, detectable and undetectable, physical, non-physical, material, otherworldly, universal, earthly, all of these levels. And we don't see most of it. We don't know most of it. And so as these changes, transformations, alterations, shifts, regressions, progressions, advancements, as these all continue to filter down into this third dimensional physical realm and reality that you and I share, as those filter down to th the level that we can see and know and hear them, they might be shocking because we weren't ready for them. We weren't ready for those shifts because we didn't know that they were happening because those were part of the 90% that were unseen, unheard, unknown. And this is the message that's coming through now, by the way. This is the heart of this episode is that this is where our flexibility is and will continue to come into play over these next few months and years. We thought something was going one direction. We thought it was going this way. We thought this was what's going to happen. We were told this is what's going to happen. We were told this is what we should do. This is what we should follow. This is what's happening. And then it's different. 
We went a different way, a different direction, a different path. Somebody else is in charge. These things are now good. These people are now trustworthy. This thing is now the next big thing. But now they're saying, you're still thinking on very earthly terms. There will be things that drop in that are, they're saying for lack of a better word, mind blowing because they're not of our paradigm. We have a paradigm, right? You and I share this third dimensional reality and there are rules that make this reality work. There are ways of doing things. There are cultural and just planetary norms, right? And ways of doing things and realities that we know. And what they're saying is things will drop in that are not of what we are used to seeing, used to hearing, used to knowing, used to being available, used to understanding a basic level about I wish they could give me an example, like a specific example. They're show, it's like if there were, if we woke up tomorrow, you know, we just went through this whole AI thing. Suddenly AI is available and all the tools and widgets and apps. And now, now, you know, not just one company came out with their AI thing. Every company came out with their AI thing, right? And we knew this isn't, that's not like a foreign thing, right? We heard about it in movies for the past 20, 30 years. There's been people who can't wait. There's been people who think it's the worst thing ever. There's been people who think that society is going to collapse because of AI, right? So, but it's been in our collective consciousness. What they're saying is there's stuff and things that will shift and change and be altered and, you know, rerouted that are not in our collective consciousness, something that comes out of left field, something that comes out of nowhere, seemingly. And those are the things that are filtering in from that 90% of transformation that's happening on the planet that we don't see, hear, or know about, at least in these bodies, at least in this, in this form, maybe, and most likely they're saying our souls are and our subconsciouses are being updated mostly while we sleep. So sleep's important. Make sure you get it. Make sure you get enough of it, please. A lot happens for us on the soul level when we sleep. These upgrades, these subconscious downloads, uploads, these even healing. So much of not just physical healing, but so much of your emotional. It's like you you empty your cachet, you know of emotional, mental, physical, and even spiritual gunk, right? While you sleep. So sleeping is important, but that's what they're just sharing right now. There is a part of us that do know that these things are coming, but the physical, like conscious, awake, 3D reality part of us doesn't know that a lot of this is coming. And so again, circling back to being flexible. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a constant, you know, message that comes through, card that comes through, reminder, like more constant than other things that, you know, I I mean, just like you are, and many of you are in communication with my guides all day, you know, throughout the day, checking in. But so it's not like I get the same information all the time. This one has been showing up more than normal. So that is the message for today. That is the topic for today. I don't know how that will take place, both obviously in our individual lives and certainly not with the collective, but it is a ripe time to let go of any kind of resistance you have to being flexible resistance you have to change and transformation, resistance you have to evolution, resistance you have to being easygoing. But particularly it's this word flexible because it doesn't only mean being easygoing, it also means being able to pivot, being able to reach a different angle, being able to 
be versatile. Something changes, okay, I'm going to go this way. Okay, I'm going to go that way. Okay, I'm going to do this other thing that now feels like there's more support towards this thing. I'm going to adjust my path, adjust my GPS system so that I am moving towards the path that is being laid out for me by nature. And we all have the capacity and capability to do that. Some more than others. Some of you, some of you are listening to this like, this is great. I'm already there. And you are. And some of you, like me, really needed to hear this message so that when something happens, be it amazing, welcomed, bright, shiny, happy, you know, the thing that you've been waiting for, or whether it's shit hits the fan, complete exit of something, someone, a change of direction in the opposite way that you were hoping, and everything in between. And then everything that we have no way to imagine, and that's kind of what this episode's about, no way to imagine, that we can remember this message and think, oh yeah, I was warned about this. Warned is a strong word. I was, I heard this. I got that memo. I got that memo and now this is happening and now this is a validation and now I can move forward with flexibility and ease and grace and faith and humility and surrender and happiness. Knowing that everything is in fact happening for a reason. I'm going to leave it there for today. There is bonus content for this episode. We do a clearing of anything blocking us from being flexible. You can get that clearing, have access to that clearing, and every other bonus content and exclusive content I've ever done for this podcast at patreon.com slash let's get meta. We also have, in honor of our five-year anniversary, which is still happening this month, we celebrate the whole month of May, even though it's May 1st, five years, I have added merchandise to the podcast Patreon, and when you go on there and become an angel, a patron angel, an angel donor, then you can sign up to receive one of four types of merch, official merch of the Let's Get Meta podcast, and you can check that out, same place patreon.com slash let's get meta. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go hear the bonus content. It's an excellent clearing. Stay positive, stay safe, be flexible, and stay meta. The Let's Get Metaphysical podcast is an Up, Up, and Awaken production and is produced and hosted by Renata Maniachi. Our intention is to raise the vibration of the planet by sharing, validating, and normalizing spiritual and metaphysical experiences. If you are ready to raise your vibration, you might enjoy our free Let's Get Meta Master Clearing. To receive the Master Clearing or to learn more about the podcast, visit letsgetmeta.com. The Let's Get Meta podcast is inspired by angels and supported by angels. If you would like to be an angel donor to the podcast, visit patreon.com slash letsgetmeta. Thank you for listening. Stay meta. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical.